It is like last year I went um I did a show in Italy um but that was by choice you know what I'm saying yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know you know what I mean man like yo it was by choice bro you know what I'm saying it wasn't like you know like these art stuff and I was like oh I gotta get there it was like yo all right I wanna go there you know what I'm saying like so you know you have choices man and um yeah it's it's, it's a blessing man it's it's definitely a dope space to be in man. You know what I mean? So, yeah, definitely fire, man. Yo, I got a, I got a question for you, man. I'm a pivot. So, top five dead or alive Christian hip hop artists, man. Who you got? Yeah, and then 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 we'll, then we'll then we'll transition to the regular, but out the gate. Yeah, out the gate. Are you are you hip? Are like are you familiar with the with the spaces? Because now it's weird. I feel like Christian hip hop is like sync in a sense, like. Nobody really knows about it, but it's huge. And there's a lot of people doing it. And I feel like Christian hip hop is the same thing. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's funny, man. Like back in the days, um, Rapzilla posted a lot of my content, you know. So I had some records that they posted back then. And um, yeah, I um, you know, one of my um actually uh this project I did, it was called uh Self Portrait. I had a record on there called Blonde Folds, and man, that record just blew up, man. I got so many syncs off that that record it's insane like monster energy um nbc see it was crazy man that record blew up man so yeah that that was a big one um but i'm not too hip like to the current landscape of christian hip-hop i mean cats that i listen to you know i listen to like the truth um the grits like i, I was big on the grits i like them because they weren't like I didn't. They weren't too preachy. You know what I'm saying? Like they they got it in. They they had great production. The mixing, the mastering was phenomenal on their records. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Who uh, who else did I listen to? Um, I listened to uh, Show Baraka. I remember listening to some of his stuff. Yeah, yeah. So you know, cats like that. I'm I'm not too. Yeah, I'm not I'm not too hip now. You know, I mean, I know like there's Andy Minio, Lecrae, and you know, cats like that, but I don't know like too many others. You know what I mean? I mean, it's a pretty dense space now. Um, I mean, I think as wide as just independent artists are, I mean, you just see cats popping up in the Christian. Like I was literally on there the other day, and I found out this guy. Ah, what's his name? It's like Alex. I, I literally just sent him to my little brother. Um. He kind of had like a little bit of a um, what's his name? what's her name um, ice spice kind of flow. Oh really? But uh, yeah, he had a, he, the flow type, but he he had like a, a super deep voice. Mm. Um, his name was it's like Alex something Alex Gene. He's out here in Orlando. He got like you know hundred k followers. I ain't even like I never heard of the dude, but you know it's it's like you can and I think that's just the power of social media now. Like you just get a mass. Like, you could be somebody who got a million followers you never heard of them. It's like, how is that even possible? You know what I mean? Like, you know what I mean? It's like, I was, but that's just the, the day and age we're in. But as far as, like, top five personal favorites, um, I mean, definitely, like, Andy, um, I mean, Lecrae has to be in there. The truth was big for me, like, and it was, it's so crazy because, I mean, one, being in the space, and then also, like, he hit me up and we were talking, and he was trying to do some licensing and stuff as well. Um, so, but he was real instrumental for me coming up. He was probably my favorite. Um, uh, and I think probably cause he kind of had like a little bit of a Jay-Z kind of swag. Yeah, that, that's, that, that's, that's a fact. That's a fact. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he flow like Hove, man. He flow like Hove, man. Yeah. yeah. Um, man, I'm trying to think who would be in the mother two slides. That's a really good question. I haven't thought about that. I know on the other side, like on the, it's easier probably for me to answer that on, and I would say like top five for everybody, which is like my personal top five, just on like I guess the mainstream side of stuff. Mm -hmm. is, like Andre three thousand, yeah. um, uh, uh, Kanye. Kanye is actually my my top favorite. Kanye, Andre, uh, Pharrell, Gambino. Um, I think my fifth would be. I don't know what my fifth would be. 
but any like any of those artists that have like their own just kind of fingerprint like on music like they just kind of like rocked in their own lane and you could you could tell like they just had so many like so much diversity in their catalog and that's something that I value a lot because if you really study my my journey like I've done you know contemporary top 40 stuff I got a whole nother artist project called Sunny O which is like a new age like funk alt R&B hip-hop kind of thing um, where I'm like singing falsetto on is like 70s 80s expired you know kind of music Fire. um yeah man it's it's crazy and, that, and this again like just bringing it back to like saying like that gave me a space like saying gave me a space to be fully me because i'm a chameleon of sorts so i've like you know I'll, i could float genres you know what i mean for for the most part but like even that project as i mentioned sonny yo we did that kind of by accident it was around the time i left the label and we just started fooling around with some stuff um and that turned into a whole new artist persona and we've gotten like certain placement opportunities that I wouldn't have been able to get just underneath my garage on artist persona um and our the first song that we ever made with Sunny O was like pushing a million streams on um on Spotify and we have like no real marketing behind it it's just all like either organic or stuff from streams um, i had to look i don't know if it got play, it, it, it might have gotten playlisted but i just know we like that was a sync project or a project that we created just because we enjoyed it and we use it and utilize it for sync and like it was just a happy accident you feel me so that's fire that's fire man and i like what you said too like you know being like eclectic being diverse man i'm the same way like i like to you know have like different types of production, experiment with certain things, you know, coming from New York, like, you know, we boss miss, we love lyrics, but it's like, you know, kind of mixed bag too with the production, try to mix it up. You know what I mean? So right. yeah, uh, you mentioned yay, man. I love yay too, man. Quick question though, man. Like how you feel about everything going on? This is off base. How you feel about what's going on? I know you've seen it coming. <laughs> how, you, how you feel about it? Yeah, well, you know what it is, man. I I think like you know people um they just feel like with all the stuff going on with him recently, like um that is too much. Are they judging him? I mean, I'll give you my personal take on it, right? So how I feel is like, so for me, my brother, God rest his soul, he was a uh, he he had mental illness, so he was bipolar schizophrenic. So when he like we always knew when he wasn't on his medication, because when he wasn't on his meds, he would wow out it's like yo he would say the craziest things he would do the wildest things and you know growing up with him i understood that that wasn't him because that mental health onset doesn't really kick in sometimes to like college age the start of it so that was the onset for him so we you know prior to that i knew who he was as a person and that wasn't him so i say all that to say is like you know my take on him is a bit different from most people because when people see it they're like yo he's a jerk look what he's saying but you know i just see it as it's a brother that's you know unfortunately he's at a rough space in his life right now and you know he needs some help man you know what i mean i mean that's how i view it yay is i think it's weird because like if you kind of grew up with yay like you you got to experience one thing I feel like is consistent with Kanye just from when he started to now is like I think he he's he, he's very vulnerable and he can like showcase um that he had a talent to showcase I think a lot of things that resonate with a lot of people you know what I mean because when he came out with the um all falls down oh yeah yeah, yeah. college drop on he came out all falls down and he also came out with Jesus Walk like he just had this multiplicity of a range of just you know just being relatable and in a in a hip hop context that hadn't been seen before, and he just said, what he said is that we all self conscious. I'm just the first to admit it. You know what I mean? Like it, he just has like a way about him where it's just like man, it's like I feel like I'm I'm getting like what I see is what I'm getting. I don't, I don't feel like he's holding back on us to a degree, and so I think he always had that working for him where he can say the wildest stuff, but at the same time you kind of say like yeah but that you know like i get where he's coming from even though he could probably say stuff a lot better yeah. um and that's kind of been the thing for me and i, I probably admittedly have a bias i've just i've been a, a big fan of kanye and like his creativity and not to excuse anything because i think you know as adults and um as people like 
you know, we, we do need to have a sensitivity because our words are powerful. You know what I mean? Like, like nobody can um, deny that. And so, and especially when you have such a platform like he does, mm-hmm. you know, it, it almost makes it even more of a responsibility um, to be intentional with your words. And now, you know, he might be of the mindset, like, I'm going to say the things that nobody wants to say because I have such a platform and let's, you know, rough with feathers. And it might be also a segment of that where, you know, he's very, uh, it could be some, you know, mental, you know, illnesses or just like some, some legit barriers that might be, you know, harder for him to communicate in a way that might be helpful for most people. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, yeah, so that's why I like, I, I do admire like a lot of his candor and his ability to just, you know, say how he's feeling, but it is tough to like quote unquote defend Kanye if you were trying to defend him because he should be saying some wild stuff and just like, <laughs> yeah. bro, you know what I mean? Like you might have, you know, want to ran that through a couple of people before you just you know, <laughs> yeah. tweeted that, so, you know. Yeah. yeah. But right. it's it's tough, man. And I and that's one like not to get too you know one way or the other, but you know I I, I do think there's like accountability you know on it, but also too like for me a lot of um, and I, I think it's part of my personality and also like some of my faith background where like trying to assume the best, give people the benefit of the doubt, give grace, you know, where you can. And and I think it, and it's not to negate speaking and correct, like speaking and trying to correct some, you know, a, a wrong or an injustice or something that might not have been beneficial or helpful to somebody. But I do think, you know, when you're able to process um, a, an offense through a lens of like, you know, grace and and mercy, it just changes the tone and sometimes people can receive certain things, but um, but also too, like, yeah, is yeah, like, he's just, you know, he's he's got such a duality. It almost reminds me of Pac a little bit because yeah. Pac had a duality of, like, being super sentimental and super, like, um, empowering and, like, you know, like, women and um, socially aware and then he got you know, I, I might murder somebody. <laughs> like he got I a big him, duality. I hit, up, you know what <laughs> <laughs> I hit him up. You know what I'm saying? Like DMX was like that. You know what I mean? It's it's yeah. it's tough. And that's I think you know, people are people and we have all of that. And and for better or for worse, celebrities just get all of that stuff put under a microscope. And that's what they signed up for, you know, at the end of the day. But it's uh, you know, it's it's real, you know what I mean? So yeah. Yeah, yeah, man. It's just I, I agree with everything you said, man. You just um, you know, I hope the best for him, and um, you know, just keep the brother in prayer, man. That everything kind of levels out, but you know, regardless, man, the cat's a genius, man. Like you said, I remember listening to College Dropout, yeah, and I was like, no one ever made a record like that before. Like you know, that spoke to people who you know went to college, you know, and then they graduated, and they was like, man, I got this piece of paper, but. They trying to give me some entry level nonsense job making twenty thousand dollars a year. You know what I'm saying? Like he he spoke truth to power on that. So yeah, the guy's a genius, man. You know what I mean? He's a genius, man. Um one one thing I wanted to ask you too, Daraj, um, in terms of like gems like that you you could drop like if you could ask your younger self some questions man like like in terms of like just give your younger self some advice pretty much what would you do like what would you do differently like if you you know you could holler at your younger self what would i tell my younger self um it might sound weird but i would probably tell um my younger self to talk to yourself more um i guess the way that you need to hear it and, and what i mean is it's kind of a, it might be like what do you mean by that like for me probably like late 2019 is when i really did a big mindset shift um cuz i dealt with a lot of like anxieties and depression and just overthinking and just not feeling good enough and um, especially like during the time when I was, you know, like newly married, like, I, like not even that, man. It's just, I think it, again, it's just part of my personality. Like I have a, a lean towards like people pleasing, you know what I mean? Mm, okay. Um, and it serves me in, in, in a lot of ways, like, especially like with conflict resolution, but it can also, when you swing the pendulum on the other side, it can be really debilitating and you never really take care of your own internal needs and, 
um, you just, you know, you just never feel like you're enough. And, mm -hmm. um, and it, it is just, it's, it's just weighty. You know what I mean? I feel for anybody who deals with anxiety on a regular basis because um, it, it just makes you not want to live. You know what I mean, like, I remember, I don't think I've ever been to a place where like, I was seriously, you know, like commit suicide, but I've had, I've had, I remember like even time when I was with my wife, um, I just remember telling her, it was like, yo, if I were to die today, like, I probably wouldn't be like, upset about it you know what i mean not that i like you know you know it's just like i just like where i am the now is just like it's just too much or it's just it just feels like it's too much and i just rather not be here you know at all right. um but i noticed like in, in 2019 like i did a lot of just like thought work and it's so weird because it, it wasn't anything like hyper revolutionary anything like i just learned how to feed my mind every day um and just had a like found a hat to be able to like challenge the narratives that were going on up here that were ended up really being a lot of the source of my issues because a lot of time the problems that we have they're not because they're really problems it's just they're just we just perceive them a particular way mm. and our mind will say this thing in front of me like or actually, like, there's, there's two choices we have. Like, this particular thing in front of me, like, actually, case in point, bro, like, my wife literally this morning um, had a little fender bender. Um, and so she's calling me up, you know, trying to figure out, like, you know, what to do with the protocol. She's, like, a little frantic because in her world right now, like, she's in school, like, completing her master's. Um, and it's just a lot on her plate. And so this is, like, one less thing she doesn't want to deal with. And it's really struggling with that. Mm -hmm. um, but on the other side, you know, she mentioned it when she called me, I was like, you know, just ask some questions, trying to figure out what's going on. I was like, all right, cool. Like, let's figure these things out and then we'll go from there. Like, it's not a big deal kind of thing. Right. Um, but it's, it's just one of those, those moments where it's just like, same situation, you know what I mean? Like happening to, you know, effectively the same person um, or just similar people. It's like, we, like my, my mindset in that moment was like, okay, like what's going on what can we do all right it's not that bad you know we'll, we'll fix it for her it was a little harder to kind of get to that place just because you know in her mind there's all of the other narratives that are running at the same time it's just like i gotta study for tests like i'm already behind like it's raining like I, you know what i mean like it's, it's with a person that i know and i don't like is our insurance gonna go and like all these things start like stacking up but again it's just a, it's, it's a fender bender but the the emotions that we feel come from what we're thinking about. Mm -hmm. And so what I what I realized was like I just had a lot of unchecked thoughts that kept me in a place of I don't want to get out of bed this morning. You know what I mean? It's like I don't know if, you know, I don't know if I still got it. You know what I mean? It's like I don't it it's just you everything comes into question and it doesn't feel like there's any hope. Um but I started to learn how to talk to myself. I used to always be weird. Like, I used to always think people were weird when they were talking to themselves, but I, I, I feel like, like, like we already talk to ourselves is the that's thing about fact. it. <laughs> you know, it's like, that's we're always talking to ourselves. That's the thing fact. is, we're just never really aware of how much like conversation is going on that we're feeding ourselves or we're getting from somewhere else that we internalize um and so it just became that it's just like yo in any situation there's one or two ways we can look at it i can look at the glass half full half empty and half full could look like yo i just sent out this email and um or rather i'm apprehensive about i didn't even send you i'm apprehensive about pushing send on this email for this placement opportunity that or this relationship that i'm trying to build because i don't know if i'm gonna be a bother or if i don't know if you know uh, this is inappropriate or maybe the music's not good enough. Like all these disqualifications, but on the other side exists a narrative as well to say, but they actually need music. This is their job. I've taken my time to craft a message that's, you know, professional, that's considerate, that's, you know, not, you know, I'm not trying to, you know, be an intrusion on it. You know what I mean? Like there's, there's so many, like there's two different paths always. And I just learned how to like, like whenever, and I would listen to my body, like whenever I started to feel anxious, I would stop and just say like, yo, what, what have I been thinking about? And I would literally like stop and I would recall every thought that came through my mind as much as I could. I would exhaust my mind and say like, all right, I was thinking about such and such, you know, what my wife says to me, or I was thinking about 
you know, that, that session that I had and I didn't know if, you know, they really liked it. Or I was thinking about, you know, do we have enough money for this thing? Like all, all of the little things that came up, especially like, here, here's the thing I always say, like, and I know this is a long answer, my bad, bro. <laughs> like, nah, nah, you but, good, bro. Good. <laughs> I know it's a long answer, but I'm super passionate about it because yeah, yeah. I just know like, there was, I know how I felt. And I know there's so many people who felt like that and worse. Mm-hmm. And so I just like to spend time on this because like, here's the thing. I, I would notice that if, if there was a point in time in a day where I didn't feel anxious and I was like, I was good, you know what I mean? And at some point I developed feelings of anxiety or depression, like mm-hmm. something had to happen within that time frame for me to get there. I was thinking about something that got me there. Um, and what I would do is just backtrack to, to just kind of catch my thoughts and think about like, what was it that made me feel that way? And so if it was something my wife said, I would just replace like, man, that thing might have like offended me, but maybe she didn't mean it like that because I know my wife loves me and yada, yada, yada. or, you know, maybe that session, uh, I don't know how they felt about the verse that I laid in that session, but I got more people who like my music than not. And so it's like, I'm, I've, I've showed over the years that I can actually write good music. So I don't need to be, you know, so I would just do all that stuff and I would talk to myself and I would encourage myself um, so much so to the point where as, cause I, I, I it was like this little hack is like, yo, if I can think and talk my way into anxiety and depression that quick in a day, is there, can I do it just as quick to talk myself out of it? Out of it, yeah. You feel me? And that's what, like, that was a game changer for me. And I was like, and I started to just do it every day. And that was the thing I was partly, partly lacking too, is just like, we feed ourselves physically every day. We, you know, we got our personal hygiene every day, but when it comes to our minds, it's like, we just, like, things are supposed to stay, you know, in, the, in an optimal state exactly. without feeding it. Mm-hmm. And that's not the case. And I was missing that for years, man. I could have avoided a lot of, you know, uh, anxious moments and, you know, a lot of tears and all that kind of stuff just with that alone. And like my life has just been like flipped upside down. So I would have just, you know, like told my younger self is like, yo, it's OK. And just like tell yourself every day that you're amazing, that you're killing it, that you're going to, you know, like you're. Like, like that type of stuff and just believing in yourself. And it sounds so Disney, but like, it's just, it's, it's just a fact. I understand it now because like we rise and fall and we achieve and we don't achieve a lot of times because of how we're perceiving, you know, the, the moments in front of us. Um, so that's my, that's my TED talk. <laughs> <laughs> TED talk. TED talk. <laughs> now, you, you know what though, brother, I'll tell you something. That's fire. And that's on point because, that's something that people don't acknowledge. I think like we're living in a society nowadays where everything is just based off social media, clout chasing, um, likes, follows, views, comments, and they feel that that's what validates people. And you find there's a lot of people that suffer with anxiety, depression, uh, you know, because they're comparing themselves to that, you know, like a, a false narrative. And like they say, you know, um, comparison is the thief of joy. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, and, you know, another thing is like, don't, um, you know, don't compare yourself uh, to the Internet because everybody's not posting their failures. Right. Everybody wants to clout. You know what I'm saying? Every, everybody got the fit. Everybody got the filters. Everybody got the clout. Everybody clout chasing one one up. But no one really talks about real stuff. And like, what's real? You know, um, you know, life. Life is real. Challenges are real. You know how you feel is real. Like how your mental an emotional state is on a day-to-day basis. So I think mental health is a, a big component, you know, in terms of just people getting in touch with themselves. Um, I know growing up in the hood, like I grew up in Southside Queens. It was very violent. Um, you know, a lot of discrimination, um, a lot of things that went down in my neighborhood, like, like most hoods, right? A lot of violence, a lot of gang components. And one thing that wasn't emphasized was mental health, right? It was like, yo, people go to therapists, yo, he crazy, be something wrong with him. You know what I'm saying? Like they, st- they, they stigmatized it, you know what I'm saying? And then it's like, you know, as I started growing old and I started moving in different circles, you know, some of my friends that, you know, they're white, different races, black, for them, it was like common. It's like... <clears throat> Like me saying, yo, I'm going to the gym. He's like, yo, you know, all right, cool. You know, I'll meet you there after. I'm going to see my therapist. But there was no judgment in that. You know what I'm saying? It was like, yo, just that's a safe space where you can talk about things that bother you. And I think that for all artists, that's a major key, too, is like 
don't get so caught up in chasing the bag culture. Like, to me, that's so whack. You know, like, yo, I got to get this bag. I got to get this money. The money's going to come. You know, as long as you got your, your mental, your emotional, your spirit right, like everything will align itself, you know, but you got to have a firm foundation. I think that's why, like, even when we look at the news and we see so many people be like, yo, that dude was rich. Why he kill himself? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, he was rich financially, but he was broke emotionally. He was broke mentally. You know, he, he didn't have the proper foundation. So that's a major key, man. It's like, you know, in, in, and I appreciate you being transparent about that, you know, because, yo, know, there's plenty of people out there that feel the same way, man. They struggle. You know what I'm saying? So it's it's good to to be honest. Yeah, and, you know, I feel like a lot of creatives struggle with that. So, I mean, people in general, but for some reason, and I again, I don't have data on it, but I would just assume like those who self-identify as creatives or. Um, yeah, like they, they just I don't know. I think the criticism just comes a lot you know, heavier for whatever reason. Um, I don't know why that is, but I just I, I just feel like I see that as the case. It's like, and also because I mean, we just we have a unique way of of emoting and translating emotions um, in ways that are like like in in very external like inspiring ways. You know, what I mean, like ways that can resonate. It's I can't even. It's, it's like where words fail, artists thrive. You know, what I mean, because like. We don't always have like somebody just in natural conversation may have a particular unction and trying to communicate a particular feeling, but somebody can they can just play some chords and it just really speaks to the depth of emotion that that person feels it's like yo I don't know what it is but those like the way that those chords is what is it the um uh is it strong in my life when the oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. sing in my life with yeah, this word right. killing me so, like it's it's that type of like. I think explanation to what art does for for people, you know, what I mean, why it's it's so vast and why it's, it's a necessity. I think in, in many ways because it can just do that, but like what normative communication might not be able to articulate as well. It's just like I can point it as like that's what I feel like. That's what it means. That's what it. You know what I mean? So, and that you know, and that that makes me think of a line that Ye said too, man. Uh, he was like, "Damn," he's like, "I was having breakdowns." Like, "Damn, is these dudes that much better than me?" It's like you know, like you know what I mean. Like that's that's how artists feel, right? Because it's like we got the talent, but it's still a, a competitive nature. It's like sports, right? It's like yo, you know, all right, yo, that dude got a double double. You know, I want to get a triple double. Like it's just it is what it is. You know what I mean? So yeah, that's a fact, man. That's a big fact. Well, um, you know, something else I want to ask you too, man, because I know we're gonna we're gonna wind it down pretty soon. But um, I wanted to ask you about mantras, man. So like, I'm big on mantras. Like, I got two. Like, my first is persistence, wisdom, resistance. I'm always like just big on just constantly being motivated, regardless of where you at. You know, you pick yourself up, just pivot, do what you got to do. My second one is collaboration is greater than competition. Like, I love building with like minded people that are motivated, that are driven, that have a, you know, a similar worldview and how they see things. So I wanted to know, like, for you, you know, even if it don't rhyme, it don't got to rhyme, but, you know, like, what's your... <laughs> you know what I mean? Yo, I ask people, they be like, yo, yo, they be like, yo, K, mine's don't rhyme, B. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, but, like, what, what keeps you going, man? Yeah, actually, it's funny. Um, I don't have, I think, like, just a singular phrase um but i do actually have a, a daily prayer slash mantra um that i created and it's just like 15 different things that i've just like recite and i've just selected them and i did it I, i'll have like over the past like three years um or so probably more like i'll try to anchor on like a theme for the year but but i'll also try to have some things to like just recite um but this is actually, I'll just read, you know, read it right here. Um, but I'll say this like in the mornings. I don't, I don't do it every day, but I, I do it like pretty consistently. But I'll say, um, today I will be generous and poor to others. Uh, today I will be considerate. Um, I will consider others' needs greater than my own. Today I won't be critical of others. Today I will be patient with myself and others. Uh, today I will focus on the most important tasks. Today I will push myself to give my best and greatest potential. Uh, today, God has and will provide all my needs. Today, I will make progress and not perfection. Today, I will create generational wealth. Today, I will have fun working hard. 
Today, God has given me enough time. Uh, today, I will not make excuses, but remain solution focused. Today, I won't be afraid to ask God for help and resources while I work by faith. Today, I will be confident in my efforts. Today, I won't procrastinate. And so, like, I took some time, like, at the top of the year just to, like, write down things that I, I felt like would kind of keep me aligned throughout the year. And it's just a reset, you know what I mean? So that's, yeah, I guess it's not a like a single mantra. It's just like a few, uh, not a few, but, you know, just a narrative that I like to kind of recite and just realign myself with, I think is what it is. No, nah, that's that's fire, bro. That's fire, man. It's good, man. I, I think everybody should have that at the end of the day. You know what I mean? Like something that you you tap in with consistently that you repeat because like words have power. You know what they say? Life and death is in the power of the tongue. So like every day we got a choice, right? You know what I'm saying? We we got a choice, man. You know, one of my guys, um, his name is David Nurse. And uh David's like a best son author, man, phenomenal dude. Used to be an NBA coach. And um you know what David says, man, which is so true. He says, yo, every day you wake up, everybody, no matter who you are, we all have a superpower. And that's the power of choice. Every day we got that superpower. So we get to choose what are we going to do that day? You know, and mentally, like, where are we going to be? Where are we going to take it? Are we going to make a choice to try to make steps towards greatness, to progress, you know, to, to health, or are we going to do things that are destructive? You know, it's kind of like, you know, you got a, a blank book and a pen and you writing the story. Everybody's writing their own story. You know, it just, it's, it's going to turn out, you know, the accumulation of our daily movements, our daily thoughts. So we got to constantly check ourselves. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, that, that's a fact, man. So yeah, yeah. All day, man. So yo, man, this, this, this was fire, man. This was fire. King, I, hey, yo, we, I want to say, bro, I love that, because um, I know, obviously, we were here for sync, but I love that it, the conversation kind of went where it went to be able to kind of, you know, we talk about yay, we talk about mindset stuff, we talk about um, Christian hip hop, you know, it's like it, it, it evolved, but I, it was it was cool, you know, I talk about um, this a lot, so I'll, I'll be on different panels and stuff like that, but it was, uh, it was a good combo, man. Yeah, I feel like... Uh, yeah, I wish we could do stuff like this in person. It, it just feels like it's a different energy, I think. Yeah, yeah, of course, man. We t yeah, we we tap in, man. Yeah, we we definitely link up, man. Where where you based out of again? Where you at? I'm in Orlando. Are you still in New York? I'm in New York. Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm in New York. Yeah, so yeah, either way, man. You know what I'm saying? We we definitely tap in. You know what I'm saying? Like definitely tap in and um and Bill. You know what I'm saying? So you know this. It's definitely fire, man. Yo, so shout out to all the listeners. Y'all know what it is. Appreciate y'all tapping in Saint Music Mondays.